and I'm not entirely sure if charging into a graveyard in the middle of the night is necessarily a good idea. Greetings and welcome back to Battle Brothers. But what has happened to the Purple Scythe Mercenary Company? For last we left them, they were in a world coming to an end. A world that was being consumed, destroyed by the evil goblin curse known as Save File Incompatibility. Well, fortunately for them, their overlord is a wizard and I have pulled them through the mists of oblivion to a far green country. The land of the Red Lowlands and the port city of Holn Island, which, interestingly enough, is not an island at all, but is, as previously mentioned, a port city. And this is where the Purple Scythe have arrived after their long journey, travelling first by magic and then by ship, having presumably many adventures along the way, which shall remain ever a mystery. But arrived they have in this strange new land, and they are eager to make their mark and to rebuild the fortunes of the Purple Scythe once more. Admittedly, you know, the last time they tried to rebuild the fortunes of the Purple Scythe, it didn't go too well, but this time I'm sure it'll be different. Um, we have of course brought with us the full surviving roster from our previous attempts, Erhard who has gained the title of old to mark him out as one of the men of old. His stats may have changed slightly, but that's what happens when you travel by magic. A few pieces of equipment may have been lost along the way and others gained, but generally speaking they are as they were, except for the new title. We have of course Kurt of old, Torleaf of old, Ulfrit of old, and Valdemar of old, the original core group. They have survived the journey and are looking more or less no worse for wear, though they may have lost a little bit of experience along the way as well. Um, we also, you may have noticed, have picked up a new guy as well. We have Herman, the architect, um, who we met along the way. We met him on the ship. He is of this world and uh, he is going to be our guide here, perhaps. Or maybe he's just going to be a bit of a hanger-on. Who knows? Anyway, he decided to give up his job as an architect and join the Purple Scythe. So here we are in this new world, this new land full of opportunities for a bright young mercenary company like ourselves. We've brought a few crowns and provisions and other supplies along with us, or possibly we managed to plunder them along the way. Who knows what crazy adventures there may have been in the meantime. Herman the Architect has given us a bit of information on this new land. These are the noble lords, the noble houses that rule here. House Horn, House Steinwall, and House Fallsash. All three interesting, but they know nothing of the Purple Scythe as yet, so we will have to see how we deal with them in the future. Interestingly, Hatlund have apparently heard of the Purple Scythe. Perhaps there is a wizard dwelling there who had contact with the other realm from which we came. But that is a mystery for another time. Right now we have to decide how to proceed, how to begin to rebuild our company and make our mark on this world. The Purple Scythe shall be known. Um, what have you got here in Holn Island, our rival city? Well, there's a contract available. We'll take a look at that in a minute. That should help us get on our feet. And also some more men. That's clearly what we need. Wow, some of these men are really expensive. This new land seems full of expensive men. But this, this fella here looks like a likely possibility. Sigma, Emperor of the Old World. Or did he become a god? I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm fairly sure he used a warhammer. Sigma, you sound like a likely looking fellow. I mean, you're just a fisherman here at the moment in this world, but perhaps you're destined to become an emperor and indeed possibly even demigod. And uh, more importantly than all of that, well, you're cheap to hire, which is what the Purple Scythe need right now. Sigma always had a lucky hand in finding the best fishing grounds and catching the fattest fish. As long as there was no storm, he was out there fishing day in and day out. But it was after a priest of the gods told Sigmar that the life of a fisherman was not what they desired of him. The gods, they're always interfering, those gods, aren't they? But that they wished him to spill blood in their name. Okay, Sig, spill, which gods are you spilling blood in the name of, by the way? Um, anyway, he set out, he set his eyes on another trade. Visiting the tavern one evening, a new opportunity presented itself with a promise of coin for dangerous work. Yes, Sigma, come and join my team. Clearly the gods themselves have marked you out as a possible future emperor slash 
demigod, and so we'll be expecting big things from you. We're also going to hire, I think, this chap here, Bertram, a higher chance to hit head, higher initiative. Oh, his background as a juggler makes him perfect, perfect, um, as, a, as a mercenary, obviously. Taught by his stepbrother, Bertram took up juggling like a sailor to his oars. So good at flipping swords and daggers, it wasn't long until he was accused of sorcery and driven from his passion. I know what I know what that's like, my friend. Do not worry. Juggling knives with his eyes closed, Bertram knows exactly where to throw each blade. Fine, Bertram, you are also hired, and you will receive your mercenary name as well. I think. Um, good. Do we actually have enough gear for these for these new recruits? We're up to eight. That's okay. We could really do with getting all the way up to twelve. Uh, we've got a woodcutter's axe, and we've got a couple of reinforced wooden flails. Obviously, this is stuff that we had because of the travel from wherever it is we've travelled from. In whatever manner that we have travelled, we also appear to have some amber shards, which is nice. What we don't have, sadly, is a warhammer, so I'm afraid, Sigmar the Fishman, you'll have to take this reinforced wooden flail slash nunchuck instead. It's kind of a bit like a fishing rod, right? You can kind of swing it over your head like a fishing rod and sort of fish for enemies in combat, maybe? Uh, probably not. Um, I'm also going to give you a shield to hold. You can keep your fishing net, put that in your bags and use it. Um, at the right opportunity. Once you use the fishing net, I think that's basically it. It's like a one-shot use, so we'll save that for an emergency at some point in time. Bertram, what would you like? Should, do you want to take a cudgel, perhaps? Bertram, the juggler. It's a bit like, you know, the sort of juggling club things that jugglers have. Not that I'm trying to equip everybody thematically. Um, you know, that just wouldn't make any sense at all, would it? Uh, not at all, and I am a, I am a serious mercenary captain, and this mercenary company is going to rise to glory, you mark my words. Before we go and buy some more equipment, um, I'm just going to quickly rename these characters. So we're only going to rename the three new recruits. The original five are going to retain their names of old, and, um, and they are, because, you know, we're kind of attached to them now, and I think that's the right way forward. But new recruits will all receive their Patreon backer names immediately, so these will be named Names taken from the Patreon backers list, um, and I'm going to put it in, I think, as their second name, so they'll retain their first names for character, and then they'll have a title given to them in honor of a Patreon backer. So the first one here is going to be Herman. No longer are you Herman the Architect. Now that you are a member of the Mercenary Company, you are now Herman the Bone Hero. There we go, Herman the Bone Hero. Master of Bones and Hero of the Company, hopefully, anyway, we hope that he will be. Hopefully he won't die too soon. That's always a risk that we run, of course, but if they do, well, those titles can always go on to future characters. All right, next up, it is going to be Andrew Murray. So Sigma, no longer are you Sigma the Fisherman, now you are Sigma the Murray. A worthy name for a, yeah, for a ruler or emperor, an, an ancient and noble Scottish clan, of course. Um, and now Bertram, the last one. Bertram, you are going to be Bertram, named in honour of Laura Creature. So you're going to be Bertram the Creature. Congratulations. Um, all three of you have received your mercenary names, and we are now expecting you to survive and level up and become awesome members of the Purple Scythe Mercenary Company. Fingers crossed on that. That's it for now. The original five are going to retain their titles of old uh, because I think it marks them out as being particularly special, having travelled from another world to this land. Good. All right, let's take a look in the market. What can we buy? What can we sell? We've got amber shards, but there's no point in selling them here because they produce them here. We can actually take a look at the landscape around here and see militia barracks, fishing huts, workshop. Where's the amber... Uh, here it is, look, there we go, Amber Collector. So you can see what a town or city or village or settlement produces um, and therefore what you're likely to be able to pick up on the cheap there and transport to another town, which we can dabble in. We can dabble in a bit of trade. Obviously, we are primarily a mercenary company, but if we're traveling around anyway, it makes sense to pick up goods where they're cheap and sell them where they're not. Should we take a look at this contract? Should we see what the people of Holm Island wish of us? Negotiation. Sigma the Murray? Sigma! You've just been hired by the team and you've come racing up uh, with a small boy racing alongside. When they get to you, the pair talk at the same time. Stop. And then start again. You hold up your hand and then point to the little boy 
who immediately says that Valdemar the Councilman wishes to see you. You then point to the Battle Brother, who says a local bitch has birthed puppies, and maybe the Purple Scythe could take one. Pursing your lips, you tell the boy to take you to his master, who is found already waiting for you. Interesting. Does this mean we're going to get a, a puppy? I want a puppy. I want I want the purple scythe to have a puppy as a mascot now. But I'm all ears. Let's talk to the councilman first, shall we? Valdemar, the councilman's got a map of a cemetery on his desk. Half the plot squares appear to have been filled in with ink. Every square you see there has been robbed. Every night they come. Every night I can't quite seem to catch them. I'm at my wit's end here. I've decided to end this once and for all. I want you to go to that graveyard and kill every grave-robbing fool you see. Got it? Um, well, I, I can kill grave-robbing fools. That's fine. No problem at all. Uh, but let's talk money, shall we? Valdemar the councilman smiles. This will make you a rich man, my friend. A rich man indeed. Six hundred and eighty whole crowns when the contract is done. Six hundred and eighty crowns doesn't sound like that much. It's certainly not enough to make me a rich man. Me and my eight other battle brothers, I think. I think I have eight. I think I'm right in saying I have eight. Uh, I'd like more on completion, please. Fine. How about this? Seven hundred and sixty crowns when the contract is done. That's quite an increase considering you already thought you were making me rich. Uh, but what about a little bit in advance so that we can stock up on some better weapons? No! Do not push me too far! You'll be paid 760 crowns when the contract is done or nothing! Uh, fine, fine. I accept your offer, Valdemar the Councilman. You, you drive a hard bargain. Uh, secure tilted tombstones. Get 760 crowns on completion. I accept this contract. Uh, so we've got 692, which will last us plenty of time. So we could see if there is perhaps a better weapon that we can buy for one of our guys or possibly oh this helmet takes up kind of a lot but but helmets are actually important helmets are very important several people pointed this out to me in uh, other universes so let's get some helmets um because yeah we're, we're sadly lacking on helmets and armor in general for the new team um, who we've already, perhaps rather prematurely, given Patreon backer titles to. And uh, and so it would be a little bit of a shame if they died. Uh, let's get a couple of full Akaton caps. Um, a not full Akaton cap. We've also got this rugged circloak and a few other bits and pieces. So let's try gearing up our guys, shall we? Bertram. Bertram the creature. The juggler. Um, you can take the rugged circloak. I think maybe one of these full Akaton caps. Also, Kurt, of old, you are of old, and so you deserve the best equipment. Um, Valdemar, Ulfra, and Torleaf, you're all archers, you're all ranged units, so it's it's not as important to get the best gear on them early on. I think they can probably cope without it. Uh, so let's make sure that we've got our frontline fighters, our melee fighters, fully equipped first. Sigmar the Murray, you can have a bit of armor there, a bit of leather armor uh, to hopefully keep you safe. We've got this full leather cap as well. We'll give that to Herman the Bone Hero. Uh, we do have this spare Akaton cap, which we don't need for any of our frontline fighters, so I guess we'll give that to one of our archers. Torleaf, you are like the original guy from the very beginning, but you've got such you've got such lovely hair. You just wouldn't look the same with a hat on. Uh, we'll leave you as you are for now, Torleaf, I think. We'll give the cap to Valdemar of old, because uh, Ulfra, of course, already has his witch hunter's hat, and uh, he would not wear anything else. Good, all right, I think that that's good. I think we're sort of more or less fully equipped. We're certainly well enough equipped to deal with a few grave robbers. Um, it'd be nice if somebody could take the woodcutter's axe, which of course is, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. This is, of course, Alfred's woodcutter axe. It's like a legendary weapon, but um, I think it's probably better for everybody to be equipped with shields to begin with. Maybe we'll find someone who's really tough later on who'll be prepared to take up the, the axe of Alfred, as it shall be known. Although, sadly, I can't actually rename the weapon, which is a shame. Um, oops, sorry. Here, take a shield. Everyone else has got shields. Everyone is equipped. We are good to go. Okay, it's time to hit the road to go and deal with some grave robbing fools. Our first job in this new land. And there they are, look, away to the east. The Tilted Tombstones. Well, if you're going to call a graveyard the Tilted Tombstones, what do you expect to happen? Um, it appears that night has fallen. 
and I'm not entirely sure if charging into a graveyard in the middle of the night is necessarily a good idea. I mean, it's not like I'm afraid or anything, but we do have archers and they're not very good at night, so I think we should probably make camp here. We'll camp quickly until dawn and then we shall attack at dawn. A surprise attack at dawn against the graveyard. As you approach, you come to find many of the graves are emptied. Not just emptied, but unearthed from below. This is not the work of grave robbers. To arms! You can't make out who you'll be facing. Attack at your own peril and be prepared to retreat if need be. Oh no. What have I done? What have I let us in for here? At least I waited till dawn. I feel a lot better about that. But look, a vile deganger. Evil undead creatures. Dark magic is afoot here. Um, but look, fortunately, there's this little bit of high ground. I think if we take this and we hold position here, we ought to be able to defeat them. How many? There are 11 of them to 8 of us, which is not particularly good odds, but they are pretty stupid creatures. They're just going to charge and attack us, and we can use that to our advantage by taking and holding the high ground here. Um, Ulfra, I think you're going to have to just work around behind and try and find somewhere that you can plink off with your crossbow. Bertram, uh, take a position in front of the archers. We do not want any of the vile gangers to break through our front line and get engaged with the archers because we're going to be depending on them to just pick them off from range. Um, take a position there. Kurt, in fact, if you go into spear wall, we can potentially hold them off until we're able to form up our lines here and, and get a good fighting position. If we can keep them back for a turn or two, I think we'll be in a strong position, but this is going to be a hard fight. We're outnumbered. And these zombies have a few tricks up their sleeves, a few dark magical tricks. But little do they know that we are the Purple Scythe and we have a wizard on our side as well. Although, obviously, I can't do anything other than order my troops around. Good work, Valdemar. Torleaf, can you finish him off? One more shot. Oh, yes, look at that. That's the power of having your archers in position. And, of course, they also have the height advantage right now, which makes it easier for them to hit. Ulfra does not have the height advantage and can't fire anyway. Uh, but he may not be able to get it, because if I put him on that hill, it's just going to put him in, in danger, I think. Um, Bertram, there's not much you can do, really. I think you're best to just sit and wait. Um, we'll see if, if anyone comes within range. Likewise for you, Sigmar, we'll just delay until the rest, till the end of the turn. Um, and see if any of the, any of the, the vile de gangers approach. Air hard, you can just move around the back here. I want you to take up position on one of these hills to guard the right flank when you can. Kurt of old, just go back into spear wall. We need to keep an eye on his fatigue, but uh, he's all right for the time being. But fatigue will build up over the course of a battle and you will find yourself, oh yes, good work, Kurt. And again, yes, yeah, see, spear wall is awesome. Whenever a unit tries to move into base contact with you, you get a free attack. And if you hit them, they are driven back. So it's absolutely awesome at holding them at bay, which we have done. Kurt has managed to do. Bertram, there's still not a lot you can really do without moving off your position here, so we'll just put you into spear wall and end your turn, I think. And if they manage to reach you, it means you'll be somewhat more defended. Good. Sigma the Murray. You've got one guy coming down on you, but I think if you just hold position as well, I think we'll end your turn, just because we're already at the end of the phase. Um, and we can't delay anymore. Herman... Move on over to the right flank here and guard this. We don't want them getting up on the same level as us. We want to maintain our height advantage, if at all possible. Oh, oh look! The evil undead has been returned to life. I told you they had nefarious tricks powered by dark magic. Um, all right, Ulfra, see what you can do about that. Can you shoot from where you are? 52% chance, 55%, 28% chance. Go for it! Oh, it was a miss. Ulfra, what are you playing at, man? Reload, I expect you to do better next time. Valdemar, show him how it's done. Hit the Valdeganger. It was a miss. And again, another miss. Oh dear. Torleaf. Torleaf of old. Show these two fools how it's done. You are the original and still the best. Make it happen. Oh yes, a solid hit. And again, and a second good hit. All right, we've been wheeling, whittling away on his armor then. I think we whittled away his helmet and his, his body armor a little bit. Erhard, just move up and go into spear wall. I think we can hold this this pretty well as long as those spear, hold, spear walls hold up. Um, Herman, I think it's probably best just to go into shield wall yourself because you're probably going to get attacked, but I don't want to give up that, that high ground position. Everyone else can just wait. More Vildegangers approaching. There must be even more out there in the darkness somewhere. Oh, the shield wall is holding up though. Look at this. Three hits. Three hits. That's what it's all about. Any more? Anyone else want to try and break through Kurt's shield wall? I mean, spear wall? 
I guess not. One more time, Kurt. Your fatigue is, is building, but if you can hold them for one more round. Do a bit more damage. Look, we've got Erhard of old also now working away with his spear wall. You know, I think we might actually pull this off. Sigma, there's nothing you can do. Just stay where you are. Stay where you are and let them come to you. Same for you, Bertram. Hold position. Nothing gets through. Ulfret, this time, make that quiver of yours count. 55% chance. Ah, oh, it was another miss. Come on, Ulfret. Seriously, reload. You have to do better, otherwise people will laugh and point at you and say that you're not a true witch hunter at all. I mean, admittedly, these aren't witches. These are just zombie Vildeganger creatures, but they're pretty much as close to a witch as you can get without actually being a witch, right? I mean, they're a lot closer to being a witch than like a bandit, or even a goblin for that matter. Um, Herman, Herman the bone hero, you need to kind of just batter away and hold that line. You've only got one that you're dealing with, so that should be fine, unless he gets a lucky hit in for you. Valdemar, can you kill one of these? Kill this guy. Good shot, man. All right, well, one out of two is not too bad. Torleaf, though, continuing to show the archers how it's done. The spear wall holds. The spear wall holds. More Vilder Gangers approaching. Oh, and another one from ahead, and another one from the right flank. Enemies press in all around, and we are becoming outnumbered. We need to kill some of these guys before the re fresh reinforcements arrive. Erhard, just just keep the spear wall up. We need to hold that left flank and that center ground. Um, and we're going to send... Oh, look! More more attacks on the left-hand flank, but the shield wall is hold. The shield wall has failed! Oh, no! And now another one comes in and attacks. Kurt of old is pressed hard. Sigmar is pressed hard. Doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. It's very sad, but these are human troubles, surely. I'm in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight, and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Double? Take any man you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Well, seeing as you are so nicely, and indeed offered double the tithe. You did say double, right? Chapter 1. Only the sun has stopped.